Greetings, Skyfarers. Welcome to another episode of Sunless Skies. I'm Cobalt Thorium, and in this episode we are heading down south. We're going to the Sunless, or the Clockwork Sun. Apologies on that, we'll slip up. Um, and from there we'll probably make our way over to the Royal Society. Uh, for the, the Sun, uh, we kind of have to... We have to tell that guy that is, uh, there's like a really generous guy who keeps giving out things that to people who that don't want them. So we basically have to go and tell him that we made our delivery of pistols to orphanages, if I remember correctly, is what the, the previous task was. Um, hmm. And then from there, we head over to the Royal Society. There was something that we had to explore at the most... I think it was at the most Surian Mausoleum. There were like some sigils or something that we had to check out. So we'll report those. Oh, jeez. The abrupt sound sample changes are annoying. Oh geez, and then the music just kicks in out of nowhere. So what they should do, probably, is have each region have its own emitter, a 2D emitter. Um, that's how I would do it. Now, that does mean that you're going to have more, um, you're going to have too many, um, emitters at any given time. But, what you can just do is you can just shut them off. When, if you're, if the player's too far away, just shut them off. Um... At least that's how I would do it. And then what you can do is, um, as the player gets close, when they hit a certain threshold, you can turn them on. And by emitters, I mean, um, not sound clubs, sound sources. And you make music and uh, atmospherics 2D sound sources. And then you can just, you start them off at zero and you just fade them in. And as the player gets further away from, you know, their their area, you just fade them out. Oh boy. Get away. I want nothing to do with you. And the reason why I went for that is just because I really prefer to keep our terror in check. I am playing sort of a conservative game here. Although I, I always thought this game was permadeath. Where if you died, that was it. It turns out, maybe not so much. Um, it does seem to allow you to load from the last port. And that might be a function of the fact that we're playing at an easier difficulty. Is this hittable? Oof. Jeez.
The glass walls provide no shield from the light. Machinery is abandoned. The princess admires the glass statues. I must have one of those. Get one for me. We're getting terror because we're too close to the sun. I thought there was something over here we could interact with. But apparently not. Scout found something. Alright, so there's a couple different graves here. I think we're just going to make a beeline straight for the sun. Maybe... Yeah. The sun is so impressive looking. This game does a really good job with, like, fog and stuff. Just look at that. That is insane. Alright, so I suppose we'll do some scavenging. Do we really want to do this? So it looks like if we lose this, we'd lose five crew. Probably not worth it. But we do have plenty of supplies. Move on. Write a report report. Yeah, that's the same. Where was that guy? I think he is down here. Okay, maybe not. Um, it must have been an azimuth then. All right, charitable assignment. This is what we're looking for. Uh, with unrepressed delight, the sequencer listens to your account of delivering the items to the orphanage, the items being loaded pistols. A partnership is forged. A hand settles on your shoulder. From here on out, our coffers of azimuth are dedicated entirely to the betterment of mankind, says the sequencer breathlessly. Together, we'll bring light to even the darkest regions of Albion. I hope you'll join me in a hymn. Without waiting for an answer, he launches into a breathless hymn. You don't know the words, but do a credible job of mumbling along. Sounds good. Now, are these just an infinite supply of assignments? A crate of spotted cravats and new sequence hymn books awaits delivery to some unsuspecting folks somewhere. <laughs> Good luck. The, daz the Dazzled Sequencer explains you'll be delivering your care package to one of the grottiest slums in Whirlbury Juxtamare. Oh, jeez. We have no reason to go to Whirlbury Juxtamare, and now we do. It's one quest. Like, <laughs> it's apparently suffering from an extreme deprivation of cravats. Soon enough, the people of Albion will look up at the sun in the sky and see a giver of warmth and life and kindness. Something they can rely on, just like the old days. He flashes you his most serene smile and uh, most sincere smile and bids you a good journey. Sequencer's Cherry delivered the well-intentioned package to Warbury Juxtamare. You'll need to find the hidden site of the seaside resort. Or seaside port. Well, I am already found it. It's not terribly hidden. Unless it moves. Alright, I guess that's it. We should probably just get out of here. Mm, maybe we'll try to grab the outer corner of this. 
on our way out of here. Although, I don't want to linger too long because it gives us tons of terror just to be anywhere near here. So let's go. Uh, actually, can I buy anything? Let's quickly check this. Let's get our fuel up. Munitions. Might as well. Let's get out of here. Sun is so flippin' awesome. Hug this other wall. Make sure it's. I think it's uh. It's probably more important to have a good map of at least one side than to be skipping between the two. What is this? Should make sure I have a good escape route right here. Um. What? A wreck. The wreck gleams with frost. Its windows are dark. Its engine silent. Okay, I've read that before. Oh, here we go. Hmm. Actually, I think we've read this before, too. In season hours. Suppose we could hug this down into here, go across the gap. Let's see if there's another way up through here. Man, my terror is going crazy. Okay. Um. What? Eighty-one, we failed, huh? Okay. How did my terror get so bad? A sinking of spirits. They drink the brandy. They join in a few half-hearted verses of uh, Tara Ra Bom Die. But soon the mood turns melancholy again. Before you can stop it, the crew are sharing stories of loved ones they left behind. 
and the lives they led in those long gone days before London climbed into the sky. So I've lost supplies and gained terror. Wonderful. Why is my terror going nuts? Like, when did that happen? Is it just this place? With its creepy, like, rusty fog? I remember having problems down here before. really creeping up. Alright, there is an entrance. Just like I expected. So predictable. <laughs> Alright, supplies are getting a little low. That's okay. I believe that we can get supplies here. At least I hope so. There's all these plants. Royal Society, faster engine, speed, maybe an explosion. Hopefully not. That terror is very concerning, though. Alright, uh... What do we want to do here? Celestial Exhi Exhibition? I don't think we want to do any of those. Um... Short Side Professor. Volunteering with a Short Sighted Professor. A short-sighted professor runs, uh, runs up to you at the docks. Where have you been? You are my new su test subject, yes? Hurry up. The professor directs you to a comfortable chair. The smile is almost, but not quite comforting. So reduce your terror, depending on success. Volunteer's lab assistant. It's pretty bad. Or we could volunteer a crew member instead. There's always at least one standing around doing nothing at all. This will gain you a savage secret. There's no risk to your crew. Well, our terror sucks. Hopefully we don't get more of it. For science! The professor's experiments are poorly explained and not particularly pleasant. Fortunately, this laudanum is high quality. Uh, <laughs> you soon slip into a soft haze of indifference, barely noticing the buzz of electrical current through your tongue. What the... <laughs> Alright, so laudanum, for those who don't know, uh, it's an opiate alcohol. I think it was an alcohol. But it was an, an opiate that people would drink uh, back in the day. All right, um, Royal Society, write a report, yes, yes. <coughs> All right, uh, Under the gardens. Man, we are failing all over the place. This is terrible. Hmm. Alright. We need an invitation to Perdurance. We need a couple of them, actually. So let's take care of that. Four Sky Stories for an invitation. That's worthwhile. I forgot we had to deliver a port report from the Clockwork Sun. 
It's a good thing that we went in the opposite direction that we usually go. So, let's deliver it. Sick Transit Gloria Mundi. The, uh, the Malefluous President. Malefluous. These words are like tongue twisters. Malefluous. The Malefluous President folds up your report neatly and tosses it into the fire, raging in the hearth. A bead of nervous sweat curses down his forehead as he watches it carefully, not looking away until it is ash. I see. Very good, Captain. Very good. Hmm. You've delivered a report report from the clockwork sun. You now have one. You, you, you now have one. You've done the mellifluous president a favor in the very recent past. The Royal Society's gratitude. This looks like a typo. I would say you now have one X the Royal Society's gratitude. You have done the like this should probably be down here or this should be up here. Uh, oh nice, the sun is bright. I think we need another invitation of Perdurance. Let's get a few, actually. One more. Alright, that's good enough. Cheerio. Alright, uh... Let's try wandering the gardens. We need, really need to take care of this terror. That really did take care of a lot of terror. That's great. I think we've read that before. Oh, I can't do the port reception in addition to that. We should have done the port reception. Oh well. Next time. Alright. Now, if we observe the clockwork sun, I think that'll give us terror. Probably don't want to do that. Um, does she want to move the telescope again? We might have to do this anyway. I think we're at 37, yeah. 1x, that's fine. Hmm. Um, what was the quest that we had to do? Here it is. The Royal Society. The inscribed tinkerer. That's her, right? Hmm. Confused. Is she not the tinker? I thought she was. Oh, here we go. This is the inscribed tinker. The inscribed tinker liked, uh, likes her workbench tidy, 
and her tea as strong as the devil's opinions. She believes in iteration, of technology, of society, of people. And her inventions are intended to mitigate specific dangers and obstacles of the high wilderness. Her tea-stained notebook bulges with blueprints, and her skin is covered in inky treatments of the correspondence. She raises an eyebrow as you enter her office. Thank God. I was in need of a break. The inscribed tinkerer can provide truly exceptional equipment from her shop. If she likes you. So we can return to the inscribed tinkerer. You've traced the correspondent signals, uh, sigil she was after. I thought we had to go to like three places. Collection expanded. Carefully, she takes your scorched notebook in her hands and flicks through the pages, occasionally nodding. Thank you, Captain. How marvelous. It ought to be classified with the regrettables in the Dolford uh, compilation, I think. She traces the broken lines of the sign with her blackened fingertip. The impact that destroys, the fire that burns bright. For some, there is no surrender. She takes the notebook and places it in a drawer marked with the stamp of the ministry. Very good, Captain. Here, your reward. I'm more than happy to do business with you from now on. You may now visit the inscribed tinkerer's shop. Inscriptions in the sky. The inscribed tinkerer is happy to make unique equipment for you at her shop. And we have 100 sovereigns. Woohoo. Let's go back here. This is the inscribed tinkerer. That's all the same. She's promised you access to her designs after you've helped her locate a, a rarity in the correspondence. You'll need experimental modifications from the port, from the Portsmouth Arsenal to purchase new equipment here. That's sad. What is this? Does this cost us anything? Alright. The inscribed tinkerer shows you her workroom where half-built machines of Herculean blueprints dominate the cluttered space. Old hobbies, before I found my real, uh, my real passion, she says in tones of fond humor. See, if there's anything you like, I'll get the lads from engineering to knock something together for you. Here you can exchange experimental modifications, acquire imports with Arsenal for unique equipment. We can do, we can acquire a, a Signora Zenobia's prestige scythe, a reinforced and rarefied canning system. Hmm. Okay, prestige scythe takes auxiliary slot, requires hearts of at least 45, increases armor by 8. Have we already, have we already read these? Are these new? Alright, so acquire uh, an adamant reinforced windshield for the captain who intends to see the stars in style, the adamant reinforced windshield occupies your bridge slot and requires veils of at least uh, 65 and increases your armor by 17. Say how many we need? 16? How much is this? 13. Alright. Acquire a cantankerous boring rig. A hardy and stubborn uh, mining rig made for the repurposed shells of Cantankeri. From the repurposed shells of Cantankeri. The Cantankerous uh, boring rig occupies your auxiliary slot, requires mirrors of at least 45, increases your hold by 4. It's kind of nice, actually. Increases your armor by 5. Acquire Heathcliff durable plating. Perfect for keeping people out. The durable plating occupies your plating slot, requires your hearts to be at least 45, your armor to be 11, your hold to be 4. Or increases your armor by 11 and your hold by 4. Acquire a Pluto uh, miniature law furnace. For the speedy and incendiary removal of inconvenient laws arresting your progress, the law furnace occupies your bridge slot, increases your iron or your iron must be at least 65, increases your hold by 3, your cores by 3, and your hidden compartments by 2. Okay. Acquire the Osiris 
patented driver, a, sc a scrupulous and discerning canning device, a uh, divider, not driver. Cyrus patented divider. The Cyrus occupies your auxiliary slot, requires mirrors of at least 65, excuse me, increases your hold by eight. Alright, so we have canning stuff. Canning. I have no idea what this is. It occupies the bridge slot? You'd think that if it was an engine or something, it'd occupy the engine slot. Armor slot, that's pretty easy enough. Auxiliary slot, that's just... It's just the thing for mining um, supplies from creatures. Supplies isn't really a, such a big deal for us. Speaking of which, we should pick up some supplies. Um... Before we do, let's get out of here. Nothing of that much interest there. Let's go back to the airy. You don't want to do the exhibition. We already did that. Um, let's go back to Nell's Tower. We already observed the Clockwork Sun. Let's allow them to spy someplace else. <coughs> to work! You sent to the telescope is arduous. We've already read this. Okay. So now that we've moved the telescope, we can now read our patron's latest reports. Over there, the bursar says, through a mouthful of muffin, on your desk for your perusal. Discoveries. Another discovery. This involved some tricky uh, weft work and a steady hand. But, <clears throat> geez, but examining the constellations I observed uh, from them, wait, but exa examining the constellations I observed from them. No, them from. What? This is so badly worded. But examining the constellations I observed them from what might have been a millennia ago. Jeez. Just flip flopping like a fish on a pier. Jeez. Just. <laughs> and comparing them to. And comparing them with the placement of the rock on Palmyra and Plenty's was instructive. By the rock, do you mean the obelisk? I have consulted geologically minded friends, but the theory that, uh, but the theory that regions of the wilderness are bounded locuses must now be called into question. Incidentally, I am having regrets regarding the absence of my own soul. What the hell are they talking about? Okay, so this is... This game is so well written. It's kind of... It's kind of obscene. But this per particular passage was not well written. <laughs> Alright. Um, I mean, I suppose you can't... You can't win them all. Alright. Uh, terror is concerning. I think we've done everything here that we can. I suppose we should go to the clubhouse. Drop off the driver. No, no, no. I was really hoping that we'd have something that would take care of terror here. Um, so that's the Rochester Club, Portsmouth House we've already been to. buy all of 
of their ministry approved literature. Oh, did I forget to sell that? No, we did we pick that up? I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Alright, um... So what do we want to do next? Our terror is really high. It almost makes sense to go back to the most serene mausoleum. We have mystery-approved literature now. If we're going to go the, to the most serene mausoleum, we might as well stop at London along the way. Alright, so here's what I think we'll do. Um, I think we'll, we'll exit out this way. It's a little bit longer than going... I mean, our tire is really high. We should probably take a shorter route. Thing is, I wanted to just clear this up and then we'd know everything about this area. Pretty much. I mean, our tire's not that high. Let's just flip and do it. I don't even know how our terror got so high. I have to assume it has to do with that really dusty area just outside of here. So we'll watch this. 39. Forty one. Wow, that really shot up. Two points in just like a couple seconds. So it seems like whenever we enter this area, we gain two. Is that right? Alright, so once we get back to London, oh boy. I think that'll wrap up this episode. We'll go back to the most serene mausoleum again. Uh, both because we have plenty of terror that we really should need to get rid of.
I keep hoping that whenever we see these glass fields... What is this? And we have plenty of fuel. Although... That's a pretty good... That's a pretty good chance to succeed. Let's go. Don't have to cost the fuel. Familiar skies. You or, uh, so we decided to press on. Push forward into stranger skies and hope that somewhere beyond you'll find some familiar territories again. You order your crew to stand firm and hold the course as you traverse the uncanny folds of the sky. Eventually, your navigator utters a grateful oath, a landmark. You are found once again. Alright, we definitely need to lower our terror. I think we've read that before. Oof. Come on, you shouldn't give me damage for that? Jesus. The wind is restless. Sediment blows in ochre billows from the crags. Alright. Just check out this little divot here. I guess we'll try once around this thing. I won't go all the way around. I don't think there's any point. The south area, though, is going to be so well explored. Everywhere mapped. Categorized. Labeled. The mysteries of the skies. Answered. This way. I mean, I realize I'm pushing my luck a little bit with our terror getting this high, but I just don't like the map having so much unexplored territory. It just drives me, it drives the OCD in me, the wall. Your inadvisably big dog whines pit uh, pitiably. Afflicted by the dread that permeates your engine. Well, how bad's my dread? 50. Okay. I do wonder if the top is... Whoa, that was close. Not paying enough attention to where I'm driving. Oh! Well, our... We're... That's close. London falters here. The sky becomes stony, its paths hard by crags. Oop. No, other way. Damn it. <laughs> I wanted to clean up that last little bit. I started shimmying back and forth.
almost back home. Again. We should probably talk to the princess, too, and sort of get her story as well. All right. Uh, terror's going down a little bit. What are we doing with all this stuff? Should we just... Never mind. Let's just sell some of the stuff. Some of the extra stuff that we have. Alright. Let's go to the... Market. Sell. Do we want to sell eight? No, we want to sell three, right? I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Bank. Oh, no, we want to sell eight. We have so much of it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Selling. So I was right. Now, we want to head to here. Restock. Boom, 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 boom. Still over 8,000. That's nice. Yeah, and I think that that's pretty much it. I, so in the next episode, we're going to head back over to the Most Serene Mausoleum again, probably via the Ministries, so that we can uh, drop off our port reports. Um, I hate going back and forth to the same places, but, I mean, my terror is crazy. And we finally have the, the uh, Ministry-approved literature that we need to maybe find out whatever happened to that guy, so... So, I think that's probably what we should do. Uh, yeah. I just I just don't like having terror up in the 30s. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you have, please like, maybe comment, maybe subscribe. And I will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.